G'day everybody, welcome back. Where are we? What are we doing? So, we are on the February Long Ride for the Riders of Tasmania, which is a run up to Coles Bay in uh, on the east coast of Tassie, which we do every year as our memorial ride. So essentially we come here and we have a little service down at the beach and we um, remember those members of the rot that we've lost. So it's a little sombre affair um, but we also see it as a celebration of remembering the um, lives of the guys that you know we used to ride with. And the and the and the, the gifts that they gave us through knowing them. It's always a bit tough, but um, it's important that you know you celebrate the lives of, of your mates. Anyway, oh, let's shake that shit off. So yes, I've ridden all the way up here. Didn't record it. It's been a bit. Uh, the weather hasn't sort of made its mind up what it wants to do and um, we did hit a bit of rain a bit <laughs> it was pissing down um, but hopefully it's um, going to just improve from here on what else has been going on so we went to the mainland and did the uh, sausage tour back in January um, and I didn't record it. Well, I, it's a long story. Oh, I don't know, I'll give up. I'm not even going to bother. I'm sick to death of this camera shit. So I guess where we are, we are in Port Campbell, Victoria. Why? Because we are on the 2023 Great Rot Sausage Tour. <laughs> but I've been having issues with cameras. And this thing here has an alarm. I don't know what it is. It's probably the fact that I've got a one terabyte card in there that it doesn't like. Why have I got a one terabyte card in there it doesn't like? Go on Dutch. Because the very first day we came across on the boat and um, went to Geelong obviously I put uh, started filming and we pulled up somewhere I can't remember where the hell it was now and it's irrelevant I um, had to change battery in the camera and I somehow managed to eject the um, SD card from the camera Ah, oh, fucking ah, oh, uh, hell with it! I'm not going to bother. I can't, like it's just such a hassle. Uh, I thought I'm just going to sit back and enjoy this ride and not worry about one damn um, cameras and drones and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, I'm just going to enjoy the ride. So I did. I just packed everything away, spat the toys, <laughs> threw all the toys out of the cot. But anyway, Dutchy came up to me and he handed me this SD card and I said, what's that? He said, it's an SD card, put it in your camera. But it's a one terabyte card and I don't know whether it's been incorrectly formatted or what. I just shut it in the camera, didn't test and it's obviously not working. So I've got no facing back. 
but this is like so we came across on the boat we did the great ocean we, we landed Geelong now hang on that's probably a bit better we landed Geelong now uh, rather than Port Melbourne and um, oh it's Australia Day if you can't figure out by the flags so we went from Geelong through to Port Campbell which is where we are now so we spent the day the first day on the mainland wandering along the Great Ocean Road all at various paces and, and doing various things um, and we spent two nights in Port Campbell which was just really nice so now we're making our way to Queenscliff and we're making our way to Queenscliff again like the, the guys on the BMW GS's um, are up for a bit of adventure riding they've got the right tyres etc so they're um, how many kilometres down the road are we You've still got your indicator on Dutchy so they're um, off doing their own thing in the dirt and um, there's a few of us that are just well we've once gone off site sandy or catch up there's another you now then there's this group of four or five of us that are just gonna make our way via Lavers Hill and Jelly Brand and I think we're going down to Torquay and then across to Queenscliff and from Queenscliff we'll spend two nights there and then uh, we'll get on the ferry and go across to Sorrento and then ride around to Phillip Island uh, of course we're here for the Island Classic that they cancelled <laughs> so uh, yeah there's that but we'd already booked and everything before they actually pulled the pin on it oh sorry they didn't pull a pin on it well they did because they announced it was going to go ahead but what actually transpired then was that post covid they left their run too late to make the announcement to give the international guys enough time to get their shit together so they pulled the pin and you know i understand it i get it and we did sort of look at it and think well you know what are we going to do boys we've already booked the boat we've already booked our accommodations ah let's just do it so we're just going to do day trips out of the, we, we've extended time at different places so it's two nights port campbell two nights queenscliff three nights at phillip island and uh, we're just doing going to do day trips and if i can figure out this camera in front of us I'll just, I'll do some um, day trip videos rather than a whole sausage tour thing. You don't want to just see us riding around here, getting stuck behind tourists, following along watching Dutchies Indicator. We don't want to be doing that. So I'll try and make it a bit more interesting. This is the area where the 12 apostles, uh, so there's quite a rugged um, coastline along here. And um, there's not many of the 12 apostles left, I think there's only about three. Had a bit of a look at them yesterday. I mean, there's still a lot, a very pretty part of the uh, Australian coastline to come and visit. Anyway, onward where our next stop, I think, is Jelly Brand. It was just a really good, relaxing week and a half or whatever it was, we were away. Ten days, I think. Three of the boys, Paul in front of me on the GS, and Polly on his GS, and Steve Byrne on his GS. <laughs> they all uh, they all went on for another two weeks, off adventuring. Half their luck. I'm gonna kick kick back now and just settle in. Start making some, uh, making our way back down to Hobart, a couple of hundred kilometres away. We're um, just going to stop at the Pondering Frog up the road here and have an ice cream, and then we'll head on back, heading on back. Hopefully, um, the rain has buggered off now. Right. 
right, the pondering frog. Please park nose in, Paul. What's going on there, son? Never get that if I did that. No. <laughs> This is why it's always a bit of a pain if you decide you're going to film things. Here I am on my own. Because I'm sitting there mucking around with cameras and everyone else is uh, taking off. I'm not, I'm not blaming, I'm not complaining, that's just how it is. I set the cameras up and I just found a podcast to listen to on the way home and here we go. So, we stopped at the Pondering Frog. Um, had an ice cream, very nice. Dutchie's gone back, he's gone back to do the service again because the guys from the Northern Rot didn't arrive and we assumed they weren't coming because of the weather they, it was raining quite heavily and um, he did make a couple of honest attempts to to get hold of them and telephone them and uh, didn't have any response so oh well. and then uh, on our way to the Pondering Frog we passed them I recognised Mick's um, triumph so so we went back and um, he's doing, going through the service again with them. So one of the highlights for me on the sausage tour was actually on the trip back. We um, we got off the ferry and made the stupid decision. So on the on the way up there, we went through the um, Central Plateau, and it was fantastic. Just really um, a really good run, no traffic, no roadworks, just cut our way through. And for whatever reason we decided to not do that on the way home. We thought, oh, we'll be right, we'll just uh, get off the ferry, head down the Bass Highway, go through Longford via Cressy down to Campbelltown, and we can either go across Lake Leak Road then and onto the east coast and down or we can just put down the highway and go onto Mud Walls Road and head into Richmond. So we turned onto the Bass Highway and bang, just roadworks and it was shocking. It was really bad. It took us forever. We stopped at Elizabethtown, had some breakfast and um, then it was back into the roadworks and ah, it was just really, really shit. caught him. So eventually we got to Longford and um, at Longford we thought oh beauty we'll get a good run now out through Cressy to Campbelltown but of course no <laughs> because of our luck we get into Longford and uh, a police motorcycle appears right in front of me just and he's obviously going to go to Campbelltown via Cressy. So we head off and um, we're behind this police bike. So we just sort of giving him a bit of space, you know. And uh, there was me and then you know, the rest of the guys were behind me. And I decided I was going to push my luck. This cop bike was starting to move a bit. It was starting to gain a bit of momentum. So I just decided, I was sitting back quite a distance from him. But I decided I'd just go with him. So I started to, I started to match pace with him. And then, I started to try and pull him in. So, what I'd do is if we were sitting on a straight bit of road and, and he had eyeballs on me and I had eyeballs on him, I'd just sort of match pace with him. And then if he disappeared around a corner, I'd nail it and gain some try and close the distance between him and him and me before I get to the corner and then as I'd round the corner we'd, and I'd catch eyeballs with him again I'd match his pace again 
and this went on I eventually did get him a bit closer and I was probably sitting back oh, about between me and that and the, and the bike up the front here and he started to pick up the pace too so he was having fun I was having fun no one was getting hurt and then well, and there was no one getting booked um, I actually thought look if he because we we were getting some I'm not gonna let, let everyone know how fast we were going but it was pretty good <laughs> I think to be honest we we're keeping each other honest I think he wanted to go quicker uh, or he would have no doubt liked to have gone quicker but he's had a member of the public sitting on his tail and I certainly would have liked to have gone quicker but I had a cop bike in front of me <laughs> I wasn't about to overtake him I wasn't pushing my luck that hard but we um, all the other boys thought bugger that what are you doing you idiot and they just backed off they just sat on the speed limit but we had the best time then we got to um, Campbelltown and uh, he went left I went right I gave him a nod and uh, that was the end of it and it was just a real highlight and, and Dutchie who was sitting back with the, the other boys he said to me at um, Campbelltown he said we had as much fun watching you disappear off with him as you would have had riding with him it was just really good to watch so whoever you were officer whoever of the roads and public order service tasmania police thank you thank you for not being a dick thank you for having a bit of fun and uh thank you for restoring my faith in uh in the constabulary that we have here in tasmania Paul and Tony are stopping to buy some wine. I think I'll pull up at uh, Swansea and give Dutch a ring and um, wait for him if he's heading back already. Not fair, he should have to ride back on his own. goes Clive. All right, I'm just going to ring Dutchie and uh, see what he's up to. Hello. G'day mate, how you going? Uh, are you still going or stopped? I've stopped, I'm waiting for you. Uh, mate, I'm going to be a little while. Oh, well, where are you? At the ice cream shop? No, no, I've just pulled up at the Bark Mill Tavern. Oh, well, I'll see you soon. Get my ass to get you and catch up. Just got to get fuel and get out of here. Yeah, all right mate, thank you. No, no, no. I'll, I'll wait for you. Right, see I'll see you at the back mill. Bye. Thanks, because that's what you do. Yeah, it's not fair that he has to uh, ride back on his own, so I'll just wait for him. Let's wait. Alright, Dusty's gone to the servo. Get some petrol. So, I'm going to meet him there. And we'll head back. That poor husky has been in the back of that ute since I got here. I've been here for quite a while. Every now and then he just lets out a howl, the poor bugger. One, downs one downside to these multi is when you're reversing, because you turn your bars, the mirrors come with you, you can often not see where you're going behind you. So 
save you going back on your own. So I checked the radar while I was sitting at uh, Swansea. <laughs> It's looking a bit sketchy, but the sky doesn't look too bad, so I don't know which one to believe. I think we'll be right. If it rains, it'll only be a little bloody shower. Yep, it's a bit wet. But, we're good to go. <laughs> Glasses are going to fog, I think I might be better off without them. a better idea. Yeah, the old glasses, uh, they fog up pretty bad. Need to have um, pin locks on, on, my safety, on my spectacles. It's up, it's up. Let's settle in and go. I'll go around here, Dutchie. Yep, it's wetter than the seats at a Robbie Williams concert. Brilliant. What a crash. He'll be there for me. It is a good idea, let's not crash. It's not that far the overtaking lane, we'll just be patient. Just waiting for Dutchy. He's dropped back a bit, got held up behind some cars. Here he comes. See ya, mate. 
something strange happened to me well it's not strange realistically but it was the first time I'd ever experienced it on this bike when I was heading up to Coles Bay this morning um, we were scooting along Finger Post Road and I had my cruise control on I had it on oh, I'm not going to say <laughs> At the risk of self-incrimination, I'm not going to say how fast I had it set, but it was up there. And um, I came to the first sort of tight, tightish right hander on the road. Um, it, it swooped around to the right and tightened, and then it sort of drops away down a bit of a hill and then turns left. And uh, I was, I tipped, I, I started out quite wide out to the left hand side. And then um, as I sort of came up to the corner, I tipped in and got to sort of keep tipping in because it, it does tighten. And I remember at the time thinking, well, this is getting interesting with the cruise control on. And um, all of a sudden, Jesus didn't want to take the wheel. He said, take it back. The cruise control just dropped out. I said, what are you doing? So that was pretty funny, I thought. That was the first time I've experienced that. All the GS boys were saying, oh, you must have started to set the, the traction control off. Uh, great, now the fuel lights come on. But I, I reckon I'd have seen the traction control flash, and I didn't. So it might have been the IMU reacting to the lean angle and, the, and what have you, so... Yeah, Jesus told me to take the wheel back on the handlebars. Which was a pity because it was a bit of a fun ride. <laughs> and, and we were through the worst of it. It was starting to, the corner was starting to uh, fade out after, after that. Plus, I don't know how safe it is. I mean, look, don't do that. <laughs> don't have the cruise control set high and just bloody zip around uh, particularly on wet roads because I'm not quite sure how safe it is um, to be throttle on into a bend particularly if it's damp and then all of a sudden that throttle shut because the bike it just unloads the chassis and um, you know you could potentially have a traction issue Oh, good. New speed limit from the 1st to the 3rd. I guarantee it won't be slower. Ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> of course it'll be slower. Why? Because I won't maintain this road. Why? Who knows? So what do they do? Oh, I would just lower the speed limit. Alright, nearly home. Thanks for watching. Please ride safe. I'll catch you next time on Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. Bye for now.